Miles. Hi, I'm Ace. And we are your Kid Professors. Your Kid Professors. And they got the energy. Teaching other kids all about black history. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Right, Maceo? Mm-hmm. Okay. Your kid professors fun fact Fridays. Your kid professors fun fact Fridays. If you ready, time to have us some fun. So many things to know, so many facts to learn. Hey, your kid professors fun fact Fridays. Your kid professors fun fact Fridays. If you ready, time to have us some fun. So many things to know, so many facts to learn. Hey, every Friday, join your kid professors. Let's go. Today we're going to learn about Ruby, Ruby Bridges! And like we said, Ruby Bridges. Do you know who Ruby Bridges is? Ruby Bridges is a child who played the important part in the Civil Rights Movement. He was one of black children chosen to attend a formerly all-white school in New Orleans in 1960. Let's talk a little bit about where she was born. Her whole name is Ruby Neal Bridges. And she was born in Taylor Town, Mississippi. Have you been to Mississippi? Or have you been to Lake Mississippi? <laughs> he was the, she was the oldest of five children. But when she was four years old, her family moved to New Orleans. I know New Orleans has some good food. Her parents moved to New Orleans so her parents would have a new, better, and greater job. Miss Bridges was in kindergarten. A federal court ruled with that New Orleans schools needed to become integrated. You guys know what integrated means? It means when black students and white students can be in the same classroom together. The school district choose several black children to start the next year at an all-white school. And Ruby was one of them. She was chosen to attend a school named William Flex Elementary School. Ruby was the only black child to attend the school. She was taken to school and out of school for, with four federal monsters. And policemen were assigned to protect her. The white parents did not want the, the kids being... White parents did not want their children tied in the same school as black children. Oh no, that's not good. Man. They even yelled at Ruby and threatened her. <laughs> Angry girl's parents shout out bad things to her. For the next six months, the marshals took her to and from school, and people tried to hurt her family. Her father even lost his job. And their grandparents were drew out their farm in Georgia. But Ruby never missed this day at school that year. Most white people did not let the kids go to school anymore. So Ruby was the only student in first grade. The only? For most of the year. That's a long time. She and her teacher, and the teacher's name is Barbara Henry, they became close friends and they worked together. Slowly, parents became less angry and afraid at allowing their children to return back to school. The next year, all the students have returned to school and fully, fully integrated. integrated. Do you yeah. guys remember what the word integrator means? If you don't, integrator means black and white kids can learn together in the same class. Right, Macy? Yep. Yeah. In 1999, Miss Bridges and created a charity. It's called Ruby Bridges Foundation. And that foundation promoted understanding and unity among school children. She also wrote a book called Drew My Eyes that tells about her experience. 
There's even a painting of Ruby Bridges in it. Okay, who has their assignment about Ruby Bridges? It looks like Kevin and Valoria have their assignments. Well, Kevin, why don't you read your paper? Ruby Bridges was six years old. She went to a all-white school. She was very brave. She was a hero. Helped change American history. She was hero to black people like me. I am six years old, and she was six years old. She was hero to black people like me. I wish I could meet her. I want to be brave too. Maria. Are you Ruby Bridges today? It looks like you dressed up as Ruby Bridges. Okay, Ruby Bridges. I'm the first black person to attend high school. New Orleans. I write at the school and people are protesting. I the class by myself. In a penny with me. The story of her going to a white school is the subject of Norman Rockwell painting called The Problem We All Live With. The painting is framed so we don't see the Marshall's face. Look at the background. A smashed and splattered tomato droned against the wall and racial swirls like the N-word and KKK. And the painting was inspired by Ruby Bridges, but Mr. Rockwell used a local girl and her cousin as the model for the painting. In 2011, President Obama had the painting installed in the White House in the hallway outside the Oval Office. I think it's fair to say that if it hadn't been for you guys, I might not be here and we wouldn't be looking at this together. So, Just having him say that meant a lot to me and um, it always has, but to be standing shoulder to shoulder with history and viewing history is just once in a lifetime. The painting depicts my walk into uh, William France School integrating the public school systems in 1960. Can you still put your head back into the Oh, can I? Absolutely. Still, you can still kind of go back there? Yes, and I do every day. The girl in that painting, at six years old, knew absolutely nothing about racism. I was going to school that day. But the lesson that I took away that year in an empty school building was that none of us know anything about disliking one another when we come into the world. It is something that's passed on to us. So every time I see that, I think about the fact that I was an innocent child that knew absolutely nothing about what was happening that day, but that I learned a very valuable lesson. And that is, is that we should never look at a person and judge them by the color of their skin. That's the lesson that I learned in first grade. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Valoria, for those good projects. Okay class, what did you learn today?